ahead. Nastier. 
right? <laughs> if you do them and have actually have them call it out loud, they'll get their own feedback. So here's what we're going to do. Let's stick with the first version so you feed it and go right away. And then this is, you can hit it, hit play. On the very first volley only, only on the first volley, right when you hit it, you're going to say over or you're going to say under. Just on that one shot and you keep playing it. On the first volley, in over the net or under the net or waist, whatever. Okay, so I'll do the first one with you. Do play it out, ready? Feed it, take off. That would be over. Okay, right? Oh yeah, right on. <laughs> now watch. Um, <laughs> three something. Uh, so that was an over, right? So if you did this with your club players, what percentage of the balls are going to be over? Take a wild guess. 70, 80% of them are going to be over. If you do it with your top juniors, what do you think it's going to be? 70 to 80% over. Okay, if you do it with club pros, 4 to 50 50. Okay, uh, but what should it be? If I was coaching them up, what would I be working on? Dude, you got to get it down. So uh, let's do this a few times. And you are going to play it out. The only thing is you're going to say over and under so we can get the feedback. And we're really working on this guy. Ready to go. Take off, play. That's under, you play it out. You quickly rotate. Play it out. That's under, perfect. Feed it and take off right away. Under. Okay, rotate. Under. This is pretty amazingly good. Take a corner. Way under. Under. Perfect. Stop. So do you think that if you did this drill and you kind of sold it a little bit and you parked yourself over there and you were saying having the feet, just to have that one step and saying over under. By the way, that was amazingly good because you're good players. It won't be so good with your rec players, I promise you. Um, but they're going to figure it out for themselves. They don't even have to trust you. They can just see for themselves. Man, I said it over eight, eight times out of ten. So that's called triples. It gets a lot of reps in these zone three problematic volleys, but it's also a big learning lesson for them if they do it right by adding that over under twist. Okay, give yourself a little clap like this. Good job. First drill done. Second drill, bum rush. Okay, for this I only need four players. So we can go two here and two here. Don't go far, because I'll need you eventually with the other players. So bum rush. What problem does this fix? It fixes missed opportunities. So if I'm playing and I roll somebody off the sideline, they're way over there smashing into the green ball, and I'm, my players back here like, what? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, let's get two first side. Ah, yeah. Okay, that's, if somebody players, how many times you see, oh, go, go, ah, they miss a chance. Or they just don't want to go because I'm not good. These zones up here, I'm not so good. I like to go inside, just leave me alone, and let me play. So I'm going to show you this two ways. The first way is the way I do it, usually in the beginning, because if I don't do it this way, the kids won't get it. So what's going to happen is, this is what I'll just play a quick point. So I'm going to feed it to you, just you and I on this half, Alex will be good. I feed it, whatever you hit back, I have to hit it and go. I have to go. That means if you hit it right here, I freaking have to go. Okay, so watch. I feed, hits it, then I got to go. And I approach like that, and then we would play it out. Okay? Now, if you hit it a little bit deeper, and you make me back up, I don't want to do that. I want to learn this other skill where I can hit them right and go. So try to hit a little bit deeper. Watch, wow, a little close. Uh, give me one more ball. Okay, so this particular version, okay, I'm going to just kind of move into it and I'm not going to be pushed back. I'm going to adjust my swing side, not my court position. All right, so sometimes it will be deep, sometimes it will be short, but this is the, ver the first version. So we can get it going on this half and again on this half. Real quick. We're the attacker, not you. You feed one ball, whatever he gets back, you crack and go. 
So you can do the same thing at the same time. So, so here's me coaching the same thing. I'm just coach. Okay, come on, go again. This game is all about net appearances. Go. Net appearances. Not that win. I just want touches on the ball, man. I want you going forward and making the miss. So we have some girls on the college team at Hope College that they're so adverse to going in at short balls that literally in a year's play, 30 matches, they might go in less than 20 times. If you hear that for one season, they might go in less than 20 times. Unless it's a drop shot, they have to get it. But it's just one of those where I can I couldn't win them ever. 20 total the whole year. So will that ever get good? No. So we set them up in this drill. We say, look, Betty, you have to do this drill with me. So you gotta have it in your toolbox. I want you to add the skills. Now they start to figure out, guess what? They're not very good at it in the beginning. They take a big giant cut, so the ball is really deep. They had no ability to do this. They just always back up, they come all back up. How do I not? You know, it's a big learning moment. Okay, but the, the thing I don't like about this version, is strategically, if I was playing you and you hit it here, would I bone rush off of that? Probably not. So that's why we do this next version. I show you the first version so that it's high on reps. Okay? If you go right to this version, you lose the reps. So here's the next version. You and I are going to spar back and forth. And it's, now I can bone rush or you can bone rush. Okay? Uh, bone rush means you're going to charge the next. Uh, but we have to wait till we get a short ball. So if I get the short ball, I have to go. If I don't get a short ball, I cannot go. So understand the rules. If you feed it here or here, you don't have an option. You must attack that. But if he feeds it back here, even if you want to go, you can't. So what I figured out is for the sake of this drill, the feed should not count as a short ball. So the feet is short, don't count that. Okay, so let's just play. Remember, either you or I can go. So we rally. We're waiting on this for a short ball. Okay, here he comes. Now I'm counter punching and hold and lob. And back and forth to battle. Okay? So that's the more realistic. But again, in about 20 minutes, my gal who took 20 charges to the net the previous season is getting 50 in 20 minutes. So this is how you move the dial. You can't just dabble. To, today I'm going to do two volleys, and this year I'm going to hit 300 volleys. It, it doesn't move anything. All right, so let's play with those rules. Remember, if the feed is short, don't launch on that. And if it is a short ball, you have to go. Okay, if the ball goes out of play and it's a short ball, then so be it. So they don't like that. 
So here's what they forget, and I know. But you go to the dead, and one third of the time, they're freaking missing. They see you there. It's not normal for the human response to say, oh, a person at the net, I'm gonna make them play. The normal response is, person, I'm gonna try to go around them, they try to risk your shot. And I thought about a third were three points. So I asked Craig, do you have stats on that? And he said, no, but I can get them. And I'll show you on my phone, he texted me, because I asked him, how many, what percentage of the time, US Open, round of 16 to the final, a player came to the net and did not have to hit even one ball. In other words, they could have came up here with their toothbrush to volley because they didn't need it. Okay? Yes. 25. It was 60% that they didn't. It was 56% of the time you got a free point. That's freakishly higher than I thought. You, I already see some of you going, huh? That won't sound right. I'll show you the text, and you can see it on his website, Brain Game Tennis, if you want to. Um, but that's more evidence that, dude, you don't have to be a net rusher, but you gotta, you got to show up once in a while, put some pressure on here, and you're going to split half of them. Okay. So this is the bum rush, and the reason I did that, drill, or we kind of came up with it, was because we had so many of our players, juniors and adults alike, that just, they would never venture. There's no way. I don't like these areas, and I'm staying back here and it would never get the chance. Consistency battle. I'm gonna use the same hitting guys. So, the way I was taught consistency was I know this back in the 70s, my coach, I love him, John Dickinson, he would say, have you ever done this? All right, guy, go for 100 in a row. Who's ever had that drill assigned to you? Do 100 in a row, okay? I hated that freaking drill <laughs> with a passion because I couldn't do it very well. Uh, and then I would cheat. And I get to, I remember time, one time I got really mad. I was, I was hitting with a buddy who had the 99 and good enough. He goes, no, it's not. I'm like, are you grabbing me, man? This is, I, that was 99, it was 100. And we're fighting about cheating or not. And I was a kid. So 100 in a row, that's a super boring way to practice. It never, ever happens. Happens on one every three billionth point that the rest is 100 balls. It's just a bad way to practice it. But we would say that, hey, if you want to have a gear where you can settle down and just not miss and kind of be stubborn and put balls in play. So here's a better way. Because if you can make it a competition, people like it. So you guys are going to spar, and you guys are going to spar, and here's how you can do it. The first, um, so good up here, because you're going to have to feed simultaneously. The way you guys win over them is you keep your rally going longer. I'm going to show you two versions of this drill, by the way. Um, keep your rally going longer, then they keep it going. If they miss, boom, you won the point because yours went longer. Okay, so it's important. On my count, I'm going to say one, two, three, feed, and then we're going to feed it, and then we're going to see who keeps it in play longer. Ready? One, two, three, feed, go. Steady down. Don't push, just be steady. And time. Who won that point? These guys are ahead one to zero. Okay, ready? On my count, for three, two, one, feet. We're killing you, one, zero. And time. So we're ahead, two, to one. Do it one more time that way. Ready, go. Sorry, I forgot to count it. Keep going. Get it going again. A little better, I think. Pretty not normal. But you might have already seen me in a flaw on this drill. 
Because if you do this with certain juniors, ready? This is what they might do. They get smart. <laughs> this is great. I'm never gonna. Right? Do I want that? Not really. So I made a rule. You can win two different ways. You can win by having your rally go longer, or if you get to six shots first. So now if you guys want to baby tap it, and we're not, we're gonna probably get to six shots. But you might say, those guys are so horrible, they can never get to six, so I know I will baby tap it. All right, so let's do it again with that rule. Either you have it go six total, the feed is one, by the way, that's one. Okay, ready, three, two, one, go. One. So these are some, this particular drill, my kids like it quite a bit, at least when it comes to consistency, because what we used to do for consistency was, uh, they weren't loving it, because it was a little too boring. Okay, Cuban Day was up. I love this game. It was actually a tournament format, guys, and I have a video out. We just did a tournament of this. So last year, you know I worked at Hope College, right? Last year, Coach Adam, who I used to coach as a junior, he comes, he's the head coach. His first year coach of the men, he had he's inherits five freshmen, and they play one through five. So their last year's senior was number six. So all five freshmen are better than last year's whole team. So which is good on paper, right? So I don't know how they play high school here in, in Georgia, but in Michigan, you don't play singles and doubles, you play one or the other in Michigan. And these guys are good enough that all four years of their high school they played singles. So they got zero sets of competitive doubles, okay? Then they try to go into US team tournaments and play doubles. How many opportunities is there? In Michigan, hardly any. A couple in the summer, now we're in indoor season, we can't do it, the tournament's too big to begin with. So we calculated that some of his freshmen, 18 year old boys, possibly had less than 20 sets of competitive doubles in their life. That's pretty shocking, right? But where the hell were they going to get doubles? They never did it at the club. They didn't do a doubles league. They didn't play help. Play. They played USCA. That was all singles. They played high school. It was all singles. So they're not good at doubles. So that makes sense. So he said, yeah, but you don't get it. They're like bad. Forget the doubles. He's asking me for advice. Uh, their volleys aren't any good. I said, well, that's typical, right? Most people's constructs up here, their volleys roll behind. So I said, here's what I'm, I'll watch. Get your one doubles, play your two doubles. I'm gonna sit in the, in the bleachers and watch for an hour and I'll just observe and I'm gonna come up because I'm gonna have my evil mind go and pick up a couple drills, okay? So I watched and they would come in sometimes and then I decided I was gonna chart. And what I charted was total volleys hit. Not good volleys, not missed volleys, not sweet volleys. Just if, if you hit a volley, I counted as one. And the average, and by the way, then I went on our YouTube channel, the clubs, uh, and we have high school, or I'm sorry, our college team, our girls team, playing doubles, they're going nationally ranked team, and I had all kinds of 18 process, all average about an hour. So I watched two or three more, and what I was getting at, I wanted to know the average volley someone would hit in an hour of doubles play. That was my number, because I got curious. And I figured it out. I didn't guess, I could watch four, it was, it was oddly consistently close. Take a guess, doubles, one hour of match play, of doubles, how many times each person on average volley? Take a wild guess. Seven. Seven. Four. Two. Twelve. Twelve. It's higher. Twenty-two. Okay? So then I thought, okay, twenty-two volleys in one hour. Is that how they're gonna improve their net game? I say, probably not. Not enough to get in the ball, for sure. So then I said, oh, okay, I gotta make a game. These guys are gonna volley. It's the fun, they gotta learn to volley. They got the way you learn to volley. You learn to volley, you gotta go out. So I set out to make a, 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 but I want it to be fun. So here's the game I came out. I just invented it once, 15 months ago. Uh, Cuban Davis Cup, okay? So you're gonna be a team, and you're gonna be a team. So you guys are back. We're up. Here's how you play. You launch from right here, no man's land, basically, right on the border of zone three and four. So you're going to launch here in a minute, and you're going to feed across court, and you're going to go. 
and then you're only you two are gonna play, and it's done. If we win, if you win, your side is about 15 love. And then if you back up, they're gonna go. And then you're gonna go, and then you're gonna alternate going, okay? You guys are the returners, so you would be returning from whatever side you're on. I want you to try this game, not only as a uh, drill, but as a tournament. We literally had a 16 compass draw tournament, and you showed up with your partner, and instead of playing doubles, you played Cuban Davis stuff, and you went through the draw. So here's the deal. Make sure you start right in here. This has all been tested. I did it with Sir's Wild Sir. So right about the middle of zone three, you're going to be next. Um, and I'll start you out. Remember, just cross court right now, and alleys are good. Ready? You attack, you stay back, and pass. Let's go. Wild, wild. Play to win. Play to win. Out. We're up. 15 love. He launches. We're 15 love. 30 love, time out, I'm gonna do housekeeping. Okay, 30 love, go. However, we now switch. We're up 1-0 in the set, and you're going to go love, love, ready? You go cross court, you play two players. Take off, go. So, okay, next guy, we're on killing you, 15 love. It's wide, 30 love, we're killing you. Okay, nice, 40 love, we're up. Come on! Game time. We switch again. We're up in the set. Two to love. And you keep going. Here's what, what I like about the game. So, first of all, you're a team still. So, my buddy is on volley, and my buddy is not actually playing at this point. He wants me to win. So, he's like, come on, let's go get in there. And we start kind of jazzing it up. Um, same thing over there. Let's go. I need you. Great boy. Uh, the scoring is the same. You're getting touches on the ball, and here's the math behind that drill. Okay? So we did this. We did that for what? Three minutes? How many volleys would you guess you've hit so far in three minutes? Not a ton, but 10, 15. Okay. So guess how many I, I did the math. In one hour, if you play this for one hour, by the way, you can finish two sets easily in a half hour, but I wanted to be consistent and measure this game for one hour. Guess how many volleys they hit on average? Over 150. So that was my big take. So I go back to Coach Adam and go, I got the drill. Got the drill. I invented it. I'm from Cuba. It's called Cuba Davis Cup. Davis Cup because you're with your buddy. Okay? And now those kids are playing that game. It went really good. The game kind of caught at the club. I'm I'm going to have a special event. I'm going to do this as a tournament. And if you're on my YouTube channel, you can see Cuban Davis Cup demonstrated and explained for a tournament. Uh, so me and Sylvia, we just slide up and we play this type of thing. Okay, we finish it in three hours, we get out. We give you some Costco cake for the next, at the end. Okay, so this, and then halfway through, when the set is over, what would happen is you would switch in, and then you guys would attack for all the time. The reason I don't go back and forth is because I want you have a good chunk of volleying all at once. And uh, then, of course, when I did this with the kids, by the way, I got in there. If you don't, if you haven't figured it out yet, my knees don't work. I gotta get them both replaced. So I'm in here and I figure, bonus, even a semi-crippled person can do this game. Because I'm thinking, I, I'm pretty good with the hands, so I thought, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna get it here, I'm gonna keep, let's see if I can, if I can play, you know. And I, when I played against the college kids, I was the best one. And I thought, man, I still got it. And here's why. They were playing checkers, they were playing it dumb. They were hitting really hard passing shots, and every volley I made was right here by my torso strike zone three, and that looks freaking awesome. I was kicking some hiney. To the point where the next day, I grabbed my pros, pros, I tried this with your team last night, 
it's fun, new game, I gotta teach it to you, and then we're playing it. Yeah, let's go out and play it. So that day I played Adam, I played Nate, I played Bobby, thinking I'm gonna keep up, right? And now I'm the freaking worst one on the court. I'm like, what the hell? Here's what happened. And I didn't get any worse. When I played it against the pros, these strike zone three volleys, they weren't happening. Maybe once, and then it was this, and then it was that, and then it was that. You know, they were playing chess. So really, this game could be played incredibly high level, if you know what the hell you're doing. Uh, and that's how you should try to enjoy all the games. But, so that's Cuban Davis Cup. Uh, we do it as a drill. Uh, we do it as a tournament. And it's, the, the math behind it is really, really think, important. So I'm just going to have two players here now. Uh, so if you want to play, you want to play. One on one singles. This is for my base liners that aren't very consistent. They make poor choices. They pull the trigger too early. So I have to force feed them consistency. This is the game I use. So you might know the game one-on-one -on -one doubles. One-on-one -on -one doubles is the game you and I play cross-court. This is all cross-court. I feed it, I come in, and volley against you. But I invented a version called one-on-one -on -one singles. One-on-one -on -one singles just means I feed it and we stay back. So you and I are gonna be rocking forehands. Alleys are good after the serve. But here's the deal. It's kind of nightmarishly difficult to put people away. So what they do is I force them here, cross-court pattern over and over and over. They can't really go for a winner, so I'm kind of ramming it down their throat, the patience part, okay? Because uh, the best way to win in this game is just to outlast somebody. So, one-on-one singles. <coughs> yeah, you do get two serves. <coughs> uh, regular serve. Just bend it in there for now for the sake of our drill. And time out. Uh, you gotta stay back. That's one on one double. Okay, so watch what happens if you stay back and just run. Okay, play the win. If you end up getting a short ball and you have to go forward, then so be it. So imagine a couple of pretty good players doing this game. Now we're gonna go to the ad. So now in the ad, you're gonna stay back, it's likely gonna be backhands, but if I wanna hunt and hit forehands, so be it. So go ahead and do this, and then I'll give you the math behind this game. Cross court, right away. Anything you want now. Do it back and forth, go. So, that's the mechanics of the drill, okay? What I recommend for homework for my students is I will say, I want you to, because here's the deal. I don't do a lot of private lessons right now. Uh, I haven't for a while. But I instruct all our pros, our full-time pros, if you have a weekly private lesson, someone that comes regularly, here's the new thing. In order for you to work with any of our pros, you got homework. You're not just going to come and drill and take a lesson and go home. So you're not accepted by any pro unless you're willing to do the homework. This is also the homework. So I get two college kids, two, two college, high school kids, and maybe those privates are separate, or maybe they're semi-privates. So they would say, today, you and Heather, this week sometime, can play two sets of one-on-one -on -one singles. So what I know, because of numbers, is the points go longer, because it's less running and more grinding. I'm training them cross-court like crazy. Well, yep. And um, their consistency goes way up. Some people will hate it. Your super impatient guy who shot tolerance is two. He's not going to do, oh yes, give me some of that drill, man. I need to go out there and grind four hands across court, only in the half court. Uh, don't hit it. That's what they need. Okay? And people who are maybe kind of grinders like that would be fine with it. Imagine Rafa playing this game. That'd be rough to play him, right? Because he's stubborn. I call it a good kind of stubborn. He's stubborn like, I'm not gonna miss and I will die if I have to because I don't want you to win the point. And I'm very content. Here's the one thing I know about Rafa. He can hit 20 balls and, uh, and win a rally, or win a point by just outlasting somebody. And he's one of the very few people that winning that way still causes him to go, right? If I get a junior that wins that way, they're like, I didn't even hit a winner. Who gives a crap, dude? So he, Rafa and those guys, they get it. They get that, hey, winning that way is actually a great way to win. 
If I had a winner, maybe he doesn't suffer physically as much. But it's only going to be one point. But if I can grind him out, make him super tired, super frustrated, and then he makes an error on top of that, so he's pissed at himself, that's the best thing that could happen for me. Okay, but a lot of our kids don't look at it that way. So that's what I like about that game. That's why we invented it, because um, we had certain groups at the club that just frankly, they had no ability to grind or at all. Okay, I have six players again. This is a class ender. We do this at the end of the class. Uh, super duper fun. And uh, we started making this variation. The game is called Overhead Game. So I'm going to show you a variation today that now is. You know how you do a certain drill and you get how they like it and they act for it? This is one of those in that category. So we need three doubles teams. So you're the champions. Congrats. The other four players are over there. Two up at the baseline and then another two on deck. So uh, I need one of you over there, Coach, and then perfect. So typically, I'll show you the way you normally do this game. We're champions, you're challengers. You get a, there's a three ball drill. This is the original version. You're gonna hit a short ball, play it out, then stay at the net for two overheads, and that's it. Okay, ready? Play to win. They come, you stay back. So we're just gonna play to win. Out oh, here's the second ball, which is a lob. And this is the third ball, we call it the money ball because whoever wins it becomes champ. If you guys win this, you come over and be champ. If you guys win it, you stay and you guys get out. Okay, I'm gonna hit that ball, you guys. Frick, not even close. But it was worth it because it would have made you think I'm that accurate. Okay, money ball, here we go, play it out. Big money! And you're out, thank you. Here we go, a charge. So this is a traditional, okay, sorry, stay in here. You play three balls no matter what. And up, oh, this is money, 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 money. Come on, who's going to win it? Is it? Speaking, I love it. Oh, you're done. Cook it. Woo. Nice day. Oh, yeah. So we're still chance. If that team ever wins the third ball, they're over, okay? So that's a free one today. Now I'm going to show you the past version. This is not only two balls, two ball version. When I feed it to you, you can't hit it over. You have to pass it up to your buddy. So you should be moving yourself towards the net. If I feed to you, you should release towards the net. He's going to pass it. A good pass, go forward once. Let's say I was passing to you, would be like this. So that you can get it. Now you have angles to work with, right? A horrible pass would be like this and then you can get it. So pop it up. If I pass it so it's up that she bounces and spikes and overhead, so be it. So it's kind of a little game, but kids go nuts. Here's the deal. Um, that's the first point. We're just going to show this point by point. Also, people on deck, including the coach, we are in. If the ball gets past you and I can save it, it's live. Okay? So it's just going to be wild. Ready? Here we go. Pass it to your buddy. Look for the angle. Read the angle. Yes. I just get stuck. Now, okay, that's your point. This is the, the overhead, and this is the money ball. It's only two shots. The overhead, you have to hit straight over. Then you can begin passing. Remember, both sides can pass, except for this shot. Hit it straight over, and you pass to each other. Nice, okay, get a nice hand. Okay, it's way away. Be ready on deckers. That's fine. Oh, that's nasty. Okay, out. So, what happens there, you won. So they come over as the champions. Come on over. You guys are out of here. And here we go. I got to the first one. Yeah, yeah. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Angle, yes. Nice save. <laughs> nice save. Nice save. Nice game. Good. Overhead. Get back up here. There's always two. Money ball right here. Let's dig in. Let's dig in. Nice. Pass once in a while. Okay, they're out. Next team, pass it to your buddy. Yeah, okay, that was our point. Okay, overhead, get ready, get ready. Gotta get this straight over. Are you right? Pass. Okay, yeah, we gotta pass more. Oh, yeah. This is how you play. Angle the bejeebers out of that. Off the wall if you get it, but you did it, you're out. Next team, come on in. Oh yeah, go again. I asked her to do that to show you how old it's not to do it. 
I say, did I say if I was a win? That was my say, I say. Okay, okay wait. Up. Back. Okay, we'll play, we'll play. You're over. Get on over here quickly, quickly. Got to pass it to your buddy. Oh, it's just too good. Okay, up. This has got to come straight over. Let's pass it to each other. Nice. Good answer. Uh, you can, you can pass, you should pass more. So here's the goal. Why the heck do we pass? First of all, secretly we're learning touch. Most kids cannot take power off the ball. They don't, it never occurred to them. You have kids in your program that have hit 20,000 balls, 200,000 balls, and never once were they ever, ever purposely taking power off the ball. I would, well, I would never do that. Okay, <laughs> so that's why our kids try to and touch through this game has been unbelievable. I got kids who started out, this is how they would pass. Give me a shot, coach. Come up to the net, just kind of hit it a, an easy overhead at me. This is how they did it in the beginning. They would take a ground stroke and just go slow. They didn't learn to, this. Now, now they're doing this, getting ready to go to the net. Because now they got that much touch. And then they set up that. Okay, that's perfect. That's a live ball, by the way, if it was going out in real life. Okay, just a couple more seconds to get it. Ready? Nice, we'll take it straight over, straight over. Good eye. By the way, I forgot to say, what you could do is say, you could put a mandatory pass. Notice how this side wasn't passing that much. First, they only played a few minutes. Okay, but after a while, we'll get it. Last chance, guys. We each get one more chance to be champions. I got the middle. Okay, good. That's all. Okay, next. I got the cover. And there. Nice. That's it. Good. I got that. That's all. All right, point. Your chance over. Last chance. On Decker, you go over. Nice. That's the perfect play. Here we go. I got that. You got it. Ow! So they would be the answer so well. Alright, so pass over that game. If you go on Facebook, um, I post that game a couple weeks ago. It's got a lot of views on it, 15,000 views on it. So, um, by the way, sometimes people come up to me and say, hey dude, I want to be your Facebook friend and you won't accept. Um, they have a limit, I'm at it. So it's, if they only give you 5,000 friends, you can't have any more friends over that way. So I do have Captain Sandy Tennis website, you can go there and I post all the same stuff there. Okay, so let's pick up 10 balls each, everybody. And we're getting balls here, guys, so I want to shift to the, the last part of this presentation, which is match play and point play drills. So, modified match play. I have a few new ones and I got a couple old school ones. So I like doing this, I think it's always up my players. It's where I say to Heather, okay, we're gonna play, but not regular. It's point play or set play, but we'll keep the score funny. Because I want to add pressure or I want to do something. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something that I think probably makes the company don't go. Guys, on two players for this. So this would be something you do in a seminar, you could also do it in, uh, as a homework assignment. Okay, so boom. Uh, you're going to play singles, so let's get across from each other. All right, I'm going to show you. I'd like to dig into points and, and stuff like this. So, we all know that every point is worth one point on the scoreboard, but we also know that the pressure of various points varies, right? When it's love, love in the first set, not a lot of pressure. When it's match point after a four hour match, still only worth one, but somehow there's more pressure. Okay, so I find pressure points as late in the set, late in the game, late in the match. Okay, that's when they feel more pressure filled. Most people are adverse to that, they want to not experience that. Or they'll tell you, man, that was great until I got the tiebreaker. Freaking choked my face off. Right? What happened then? You're struggling to change the pressure. So here's the deal, we actually want to reverse that. We want our players to have lots of pressure so they get used to it. But if they play a match, again, I've done the math, a one hour singles match is actually how many minutes of live play do you think? 12 
12 to 16, depending on the first team. So already we're only playing 15 minutes, let's say. And if you define it, the pressure point is 30 all or later, so you're within two points of winning, or 4-4 four, four the set or later. If that's how we define it, just for the sake of argument. Uh, I counted how many times in a one hour thing that would happen and how many minutes, okay? So you're only in that for like less than five minutes of play of the whole hour. You're actually in one of those predictions. You say, well, I get to 30 all a lot. Yeah, but then you play the point and that minute-wise that took 10 seconds. So it doesn't add up. So here's what we tend to do. A new way, I will tell my two juniors here. All right, guys, you're your homework for the week. You're going to play... Um, usually I do this by hours, not by sets, because it sets so, so quickly. You're going to play, you're going to play pressure sets, high pressure sets we call it. And here's the rules of this game of play. Every point starts at, uh, I'm sorry, every game starts at 30 all, and every set starts at 4-4. Four, four. So think about that. I could play four points here, and the set could be over. I might play 10 sets. But what happens is every single point is already, by definition, starting to the pressure. So people come out, here's how you usually go, okay, that's cool, I like that game. And they double ball, a little break point. What the hell, break point? I play zero seconds, yeah, break point, dude. And then after they do it, then, I don't like that. Okay, so let's play it out, show how it goes. It's zero, I'm sorry, it's love, love, and it's four, four in the set. And I told them to play for an hour and a half, that's it. Should I do it? No. As 
Well, 40 should do it, yeah, because if you don't do it, you're going to lose this game, so you won't have to play it. Uh, and then the reverse of that is any given time I play a set this way, on one point, by the way, that can happen one point per game. Or the other, the sister game, is one point per game, I get to say, you've got to come up in zone three. So come up here all the way to zone three, right behind the third line, and okay, stop. If you pass through just for this one point that I pick, strategically, hopefully, inside the game, you've got to return from there. And most people go there, what? Are you what? Yeah, you'll be trying. Saber. All right, um, break or hold. I like this one. This is a rather new one I've been doing. I play you, you play me. It's called break or hold. I serve, and I'll keep serving. Here's how the server wins. If the server ever wins three in a row, he claims the game. If the returner ever wins two in a row, he claims the game. So it's one of those, a game might go forever. But there's a bit of momentum to that version, okay? So if I win one, I don't win the next one, now you have one in a row, now I gotta stop you. If you win two in a row, bam, game's you. In that example, we would each one two, but you would have get the game. And then this is the one I've been saving for the last. So, let me have you guys play a point, just one single point. Uh, what I'm gonna have you do is, we're worried about our players not playing right, right? I believe in my heart, my biggest mission on the court is try to get players to have a cool tennis IQ. Like, how do you actually freaking win a match and not just pretty strokes. So to me, we have, I have, I think a lot of players, they don't play right. They, they don't even know the art of competition, like how should I play, what should I try. They just hit balls random all over hell, and they put it together and that's my match. So here's what's gonna happen. To get, to kickstart that thinking, we're gonna have them play, and after the point is done, I'm gonna ask you to grade yourself. You get to say zero, one, or two, you get to grade yourself, zero, one, or two, on quality of the point you play. What the hell is a quality point? Um, quality of the point for most of us would be the right decision, she did the right shot at the right time. It might have been a long point, maybe it was a short point, but you didn't do anything stupid. So, let's all try it. Go ahead and play one point. How about you? She put a few balls in play, right? So what would you give yourself? Yes, she, this is common. Zero. How old are you? Sorry. How old are you? 23. Yes, it's not until 24 that you learn it. But here's what happens. The younger they are, she gave herself a zero. Was that a zero? No. No. Why did she give herself a zero? She made an unforced error on the last point. She was behind the baseline and she just kind of went for too much. Okay, but she, juniors tend to look at shots, especially the last shot, and they judge the whole point that way. So I would say that was a one. You could actually, if you would have rallied 30 balls and saved a couple, you know, incredible hits, and maybe missed an unforced error, it's possible that's still a two. The whole point was a two. And you missed the end, but you hit 32 good shots. Okay, so here's the story. On my TV at the club, I have footage of old tennis matches like US Open and stuff. And there's a footage of Rafa playing Fed at the clay court or at Rolling Heroes. And there's one point in particular, sometimes during, this is fun to do by the way, watch with a group of players on one of your TVs where you can scroll back and forth and just watch together and coach and say, what do you think? Stop the ball in mid point and say, what do you think Federer's gonna hit next? Amazing discussion. You'll find that your kids are quite brain dead about any of this stuff. So here's the point that 32 ball rally, and I watch it, and we all watch it, and I stop, and I turn to the kids and go, thoughts? And they go, and by the way, the point ended, Rafa hits his famous loopy forehand, way to hell, over there, the feds back in, the feds backs up a little too much, gets the strike zone four back in, leaves it short, Rafa comes up here, hits a forehand winner, 3,000 miles an hour there, point over. That's how the last three shots work. So what happens, 
as I say, thoughts, and what do they all focus on? Oh, that's